Welcome to the Brantford Public Library's challenge, Brantford Reads Diverse Books, where we challenge you to find amazing reads. We want you to discover new characters, stories, and authors. Join the reading challenge at brantfordlibrary.readsquared.com. Kids, families, and teens are all welcome to join. This video's featured author is Christy Jordan Fenton. We're so excited to have Christy share about her writing process and favorite reads. Christy is an award-winning author, Indigenous rights activist, and a land defender. She has written about her mother-in-law's residential school experiences, as well as her own experiences as the child of a residential school survivor. Hello, my name is Christy Jordan Fenton, co-author of Fatty Legs, A Stranger at Home, When I Was Eight and Not My Girl. Our first question is, why do you write? Why do I write? Well, there are a number of reasons that I write. Uh, one is that I can't not write. So when you're an artist of any sort, a dancer, a writer, a visual artist, usually it's something you can't stop yourself from doing. You can't stop your imagination from creating whole universes. And it gets lonely sometimes in those universes and you want to invite people in and you want them to know about these worlds that you walk around living in, in your imagination. And the only to, way to do that is to write them down so that other people can join you. Also, I just really, really love words. I love playing with words, the sound of words, how they go together. And when it came to writing Margaret's stories, the reason that I wrote them, so I wrote them for readers about your age, because when I was that age, I had a stepfather who had gone to residential school, and I really wanted to know more about what had happened there. And I wanted to um, understand how something that happened when the people in my life were young affected them so much when they were adults. So when Margaret told me her story, um, I realized it was a chance to answer myself when I was younger. So that's the other reason I think that I write because I want to answer questions for myself, whether that's my younger self or myself today or even my future self. Why I like to write is I really like to get lost in my imagination. I get bored fairly easily. No, I should take that back. I don't get bored. I don't get bored easily because I go into my imagination a lot. Um, I'm somebody who never just sits stuck, uh, idle. So when I was in school, when I was your age, I was the child staring out the window, lost completely in outer space. Um, the thing I like best about writing is that I'm entertaining myself and discovering things about myself the whole time. Um, and I keep myself very entertained that way. Our second question is, where do you get ideas for stories? Where do I get my ideas for stories? I get my ideas for stories everywhere. And um, one of the places I get my ideas for stories is music. I really, really love music a lot. And sometimes I get ideas for stories that don't have anything to do with the songs. Some of the songs that I listen to aren't even in English and I don't understand them, but there's something about the emotion the singer is expressing or um, the notes in the music that just carry me away. I get ideas from watching people a lot. I do uh, a lot of watching people, listening to people, um, as I did with, with Margaret, who I wrote about. I listened to her stories a lot, and then my imagination started stitching them together in how they work together as one big story, because she would tell me little stories at a time. I get as, uh, ideas for stories from other artists, so reading a book, and it gives me an idea of something new that's possible, um, watching movies, uh, a lot of times looking at art, I really like art as well. So I might see a painting or a picture and I start making up stories right away in my head about what's going on behind the scenes there. So pretty much everywhere I carry my, uh, I, I used to carry notebooks with me. Now I have my phone and I have a notes app and I write down ideas a lot in my notes app so that I don't forget them. Our last question is, what are your favorite reads? What books do I like? 
when I was younger and as an adult as well, uh, my favorite author has been Mordecai Richler. So that would be like the uh, Jacob Tutu books. When I was young and I first heard Jake, uh, read Jacob Tutu meets the Hooded Fang, um, it seemed, it was a whole other world, but it seemed kind of realistic. I didn't grow up with a very uh, rosy or happy childhood. So to see Jacob uh, Tutu always going through this hard time, he had uh, his older siblings all um, uh, treated him not so great and, and uh, discarded him or disregarded him. And he went on um, to be the hero. My very favorite book ever, ever, ever is The Little Prince. I really love The Little Prince a lot. I love it so much. I own several copies of it and I hand it out um, to people all the time. It's a book that I read when I was young and I have read several times since. I read it over and over again and I always learn something new. And um, I've read it with my children and they also, also loved it. And um, again, because I didn't have the, the happiest childhood, I tend to be drawn to books that um, aren't Philly and rosy and all great things happen. But I really, really like the idea of the main characters, even if they are children, that they make it through and they become heroes. And so um, along with that, I really love Coraline. Um, I just love this book quite a, quite a bit. Um, I really like Neil Gaiman. And uh, another book that I really, another artist, actually, I am a big fan of illustrators. I really, really like illustrators a lot. So um, my dream is to write a book with Jemson one day, and I do not speak Korean, but I really love this book. I love all of his books um, and the artwork in them. And sometimes I use Google Translate, so I can read them. I love this book. It's um, three friends who maybe have things about them that would make it very hard for them to connect with the world. And they find each other and they go on a journey together. And through that, they find their way to connect to each other. And um, that's something that I had a hard time with when I was young. So I think that this speaks, speaks to my younger, uh, younger self. I really love graphic novels. I love mangas. I um, have my own picture book collection. It doesn't belong to my children. It's mine. And um, same with middle grade and YA books. I, I read a lot and I usually have um, anywhere between four and five books on the go, probably um, a fiction book that I'm reading, an audio book that I listen to when I do housework and things like that. Um, usually at least one nonfiction book, if not two. And um, then I will have usually a, a younger uh, person's book. So whether, whether that's um, reading through some picture books or um, a middle grade or a YA. And then um, almost always I've got um, a manga, a graphic novel I'm working through as well. I am someone who reads based on my mood. So I have to have several different um, books on the go at once. And then depending on what my mood is, that will tell me which book I'm going to read. So I don't think there's any rules about reading books. I also think, unless it's a school assignment, um, life is too short. If a book isn't really gripping you, take it back to your library and ask your librarian to recommend something else. And eventually you are going to find uh, the book that really calls to you and that you're going to love. And once you do, the doors just, just open. They flood open and you'll start discovering more and more books like that. And then more and more different types of books that, that you like. Um, so if a book doesn't feel right for you, try a different book. Um, there's a story out there for everybody. That was Christy Jordan Fenton. Thank you for sharing a bit about yourself. You can find more from Christy on her website, cjordanfenton.com or Facebook at Fatty Legs. You can find any of the books mentioned in this video, including favorites in the library catalog, Libby or Hoopla. Don't forget to join the Brantford Reads Diverse Books Challenge at brantfordlibrary.readsquared.com or the handy Read Squared app. 
Here you can track each challenge you complete and earn points towards a prize draw for completing challenges. If you don't know what to read, borrow a diverse books book bundle. For each bundle, we've selected five books that will help you complete the challenge. For more videos from the Brantford Public Library, make sure to click subscribe or visit brantfordlibrary.ca.